Welcome back everybody, Just Mike here. Anyway, today we're going to work on an antique clock glass. It had a flower down below the dial and it was in glass and the glass was broken. Well, how do you fix that? Because this glass wasn't painted on. It was a picture that was cut out, put onto the glass, and then some kind of a coating was put over it back in the day. I'm going to show you what I did to make this thing work and look just as beautiful as it did. Don't forget to subscribe because it's free and let's get on with this glass project. So this is the way it turned out and they look a lot better than what they did when I was just doing the regular uh, print on paper and so I was just testing that one. I'm gonna go ahead and get this one cut out and get this back off of here and then try it again. I got the picture cut out, the same one that's underneath this glass, but this is regular paper. When you're cutting these out, don't be afraid to leave a little white line that's on the printer paper on the outside so you don't destroy the painting, I guess, edges because th those give it that more real look even though it's a painting. And you can cut this out with a, a razor blade or if your wife's not home, go get her sewing machine scissors. She'll never know. And cut it out because it's nice to have something really sharp to cut this out without ripping and that kind of stuff. So let's try this again. Trying to get the glue on the whole surface of the colored part that's going to stick onto the glass. I'd like to push on it, drag it, I guess I'll say a little bit, but you got to be careful as you do have your paper edges you have to worry about pulling up or whatever but you want that glue extra glue will say to actually come out so you don't have air gaps in which I don't know if it's going to make any difference or not once this thing dries but I prefer, if I can, to get them all out of there. It might help if you had a, a roller or something to do this, but the wife so she's not that crafty, so she don't have a roller that I could borrow. So in my opinion, it's already laying better than what the other one did. So now I'm going to try a hair dryer on the other side and see if I can start this drying process a little faster. Probably don't need to because you do want to, I guess, soak in the paper and start coming out. I'm going to try to work some more of those bubbles out and we'll see what happens. Well, just a few minutes of running the hair dryer on the back side. This is already starting to dry up quite nicely. And I'm, I guess I'm not as worried. I just wanted to make sure it's going to work. And so far I'm quite happy with that. And so I can go ahead, I guess, and mix up some gesso homemade gesso because that's what's going to go on the back side of all of this that's why the smeared glue that's on the outside of this 
that doesn't make any difference because this whole glass has to be coated with something and the original glass had that I'm going to call it gesso you can see on the back of here it's the white stuff and if you look close you can see that this was cut out which originally I thought that was a painting so that's why I say when you're cutting it out leave the edges so you don't cut into the color so that way it still looks like a painting and not all boogered up from the scissors I guess we'll say to make your gesso you can go online on YouTube and they'll show you how to make it with different products. I already got a quarter cup of water here and I don't have school glue so I don't have any kids around but I do have my wood glue so let's just see how well that works. You're supposed to dump that in there and start mixing it up. And you're right. Wife's not home, so she'll never know I used glue. I'm using an eighth of a cup. And we'll mix that in. And once that's mixed in, we're going to start adding the cornstarch to this. I'm going to put two tablespoons in see how it works out and possibly keep going until it turns in a oh, little bug he wants in my yeah he's in there oh i almost had him in there he could have been in at the flowers so let's we'll start out with two and more than likely add more than that. Let's get that mixed up. They use a fork in theirs. I don't know if I can get away with using the fork, so I'm using the cake decorating frosting deal. This is mine. I found it at GW. So I'll make sure to take care of this and get it cleaned up really good. <laughs> so you can tell that's not even close to being pancake batter. And we do have lumps in there too. I'm going to go ahead and add a little more. Almost another tablespoon. We got Let's say we got about three tablespoons in here right at the moment. Now this is going to make way more than I need. And if you're a crafty person, you might use this uh, later. Some people, or a lot of them, they use this for painting onto their canvas before they actually do any painting itself. So it pretty much, I guess, seals the canvas, I do believe, and makes it easier to paint on, get the paint to flow. So I'm going to say this is a, what, four now tablespoons. And of course, this is what I'm going to use to paint on my glass to seal in that picture. So I got it to what I consider pancake consistency and now they suggest you, in which I added probably another four or five tablespoons of uh, the corn syrup, but now they suggest or tell you to use two tablespoons of white paint and mix that in.
Yeah, that's close enough for the bubbles that are in there. So here's my glass. This is with the wet white paint in it. Now, I'm going to say if you're going to paint this on a canvas, which we're not dealing with that, but uh, you might want it thinner. I'm just going to put this on there and maybe spread it around with my little knife here. And we'll see how it goes, but I plan, plan on putting two to three coats on here. So far, that doesn't look too bad compared to having a broken glass that always looks broken. This here is new. And when it comes to this gesso you made, it is hard to stir, but when you pick it up and let it dribble down, it does, does have the consistency of pancake batter. And don't forget to cover it each time. Uh, it's better to put it in a sealable jar. I'm not going to keep this after I'm done. I'm going to get rid of it. So I'm just using the wife's mixing bowl to make this. And hopefully I'll get it done before she gets home. And get this cleaned up if it will. So let me get my next coat on here. I've started over again. Don't put it on thick because it's not going to work out for you. I'm going to try painting it on this time. So I'm going to do a nice thin layer, I guess we'll call it. And then when it dries, I'll do another layer. And maybe this time it won't crack on me. And I'm not going to worry about seeing clear through because this is going to be more than one layer. Again, I have a new pitcher, and I didn't worry that much about how much of the white I got on. I left big chunks of white there and there because it all disappears unless you're looking really, really close, and I don't know why you'd be doing that unless you think the clock is cool. This here feels a little thick. I might add a little water to it, tame it down a little bit. I also took and used rubbing alcohol on the glass before I put any of this on here. 
just in case that might be something that's going to help adhere to the glass with this uh, gesso, gesso that we made. So there we go. We're going to let that thing dry overnight and see what it looks like. Last time, as you remember, I just plastered it on like frosting and it didn't like the idea of being so thick, I guess. So this is dry. Let's give it a second coat. Maybe that's all I'll need is a second coat. It depends on how well this here goes on. And it's only been a what, three hours ago. It feels like it needs a little more moisture in here to spread a little bit easier. I went and got a little more water. Still a kind of a runny pancake batter type consistency. I'd say it's a little waterier in order to make this thing flow a lot better. So this is my second coat. Yes, it's wet. Now I'll let that dry overnight. And so this turned out great. I've only got two coats on the back and because this isn't waterproof, I'm going to go ahead and spray it with a varnish of some sort and seal it. Then I can put it into its frame and get it into the clock. And so we got her done. Beautiful as can be. Now all I have to do is clean up the glass and I can install this thing again. Brings the clock value right back to where it should be compared to the damaged glass that was in it already. Anyway, I hope you've learned something. Gesso seems to work out just fine and actually kind of looks like the same thing that was there originally. Don't forget to subscribe again. And give me a thumbs up if you could. Until next time, God bless.